been many times in the villages called to preach, called to share a message, called to teach, traveling throughout Kenya, Tanzania, Zanzibar, and hearing the drums calling us to be centered, calling us to come together, calling us to come together in community and to be in oneness. Those drums echoed out and carried the message, something amazing is about to happen, get ready to celebrate. Because church was always celebration in that culture, in that context. Quite often, we think of church not in the mode of celebration, but let's be quiet, let's be reflective, let's be inward, let's be uh, not making any noise or any movement, hush, hush, hush in church is the concept, hush only when the preachers preaching, but otherwise, get ready to say and speak and shout and dance, shall we say, was the tradition. And gathering under the biggest tree might be the uh, sanctuary space, uh, or in the evening time, people would come with a small little tuna can smashed down with a little handle on it, a homemade lamp with a little bit of fabric coming out, poured with some oil that we carried that would be their lights as they'd come down the pathways, walking down to come together. And you'd see lights coming all from the hillside, coming together to join together to create a sanctuary of light for an evening celebration. Either way, it was all about people coming together today to celebrate, and that's what we're here to do today. Celebrating so many wonderful occasions, so many great things. So today, as we begin this celebration, as we think about all the wonderful blessings, our hearts are filled with the spirit of gratitude for everything that's come, everything that has been, and everything that is yet to be. I'm going to ask you a very important question. What's your most important asset? What's your most important asset? Is it your money? Is it your material possessions? How about, is it your personality? Or is your greatest asset your character? There was an elderly couple. They were discussing their wonderful assets of each other. Talking about the years that they spent together and their sharing in this wonderful journey of marriage. They've shared, oh, you have some wonderful assets. And honey... The husband said to the wife, one of your great assets is your character and how beautiful it is. Sometimes I act up. Sometimes I get into a foul mood. And I am just so appreciative that you are so calm. And this is such a great asset. How do you manage to stay so calm with my foul moods? Oh, she said, I just always go and clean the toilet. I go into the bathroom and I just clean the toilet. That works? That really works for you? It helps. Yes, she said, because I'm using your toothbrush. (laughs) So I'm asking you today, what is your greatest asset? What is it that is something that you are most impressed with, most proud of? Let me offer you a universal asset that we all have, that we can all celebrate together, and that is our most important asset is our conscious control of our own life. Nothing else can satisfy or fulfill us unless we enjoy the freedom that comes with control of mind, of that inner world within us. You have a great asset, the ability to take control of your inner world, your emotions, your outlook, your very feelings. You have the ability to take control of them, to actually shape, mold your day, to really look into the inner life of you and saying, I can have this wonderful character asset that I can handle all those foul moods. May not require a a bathroom cleaning with a toothbrush, but I can do it because I know that the power and presence within me is there. Yet, knowing this, we sometimes allow all kinds of circumstances, any kind of happening in our world around us, economic conditions, you might say, to take control of our life and to shatter our emotional balance, to shatter our ability to say, I'm at perfect peace, to shatter our day and to say, oh my Lord, this is a terrible moment in my life. The other day I asked someone, how are you? And they said, well, let me check my bank account first. Then I'll tell you how I'm doing and how I am because that was going to affect their mood most importantly. Someone else said, you know, uh, my day has been ruined because I looked at something on Facebook. Oh, and I just let it just ruin and destroy my emotions. I got angry. I got caught up in something. Another person said, "Uh, how was your day? Well, I just devastated. Someone said they didn't like my outfit. You know, I can look at you and make all these kind of lists of things that we may allow something to come in, take control. 
yet we have control. We have the control that was in our lives to set the course of our emotional out, uh, pouring, of our emotional outlook, our life, and our journey. There was a man who was told he only had six months to live. And the doctor turned to him in great compassion and says, How will you live knowing this truth that time is so short here on this earth for you? And he said, Well, I'll live like I've always lived, with a grateful heart, one day at a time powerful thought. A grateful heart one day at a time is how we're called to live. And today we're celebrating with a grateful heart the many blessings that we have. And it's wonderful at big occasions to get caught up in joy and celebration and saying, I'm so thankful for all the things that have transpired. I'm really grateful for this uh, place that we've come to in the journey of our spiritual lives. The place we've come to as a church and a congregation. We can get caught up in the wonderful joy of celebration, yet things can rock our boats. We know that it's important that we live with that grateful heart every day. Today, we're celebrating 50 years of the Metropolitan Community Church Movement in the world around us. 60, 1968, 12 people got together on the first Sunday of October. Reverend Troy Perry felt a calling to begin a church that had a powerful message of inclusivity. In a world where so many spiritual communities were closing doors to people who were living in the margins, people who were of the LGBT community, and many more, he provided a space. And for 12 people to gather together in that very first service, 1968, it started an, a movement of inclusiveness, a message that says, the world is called to welcome one another without boundaries, without barriers, without walls. And so it began to spread across the United States, across the North American continent, into countries around the world. And today that message is permeating many traditional and mainstream churches. Who would have thought 50 years ago that today churches would welcome LGBT people. And as I look around in my pastoral peers and those in the Atlanta community that we come together in clergy alliances, I look and wonder, is there a straight pastor left in the world? Because it seems like everywhere I turn, oh, there's a lesbian pastor in the Lutheran church. There's a gay man at the Episcopal church. There's a gay man at the Catholic church. There's someone here who is LGBT. You see, the spirit of inclusion has come around and it's permeating. And we celebrate today the birthing of this kind of consciousness that says we live in a world that is inclusive. And we want to carry that message even beyond the MCC context as well. Today, we're celebrating 46 years of this church, this congregation, starting with very humble beginnings, gathering once again in a home, to start up with no place to go, no facility whatsoever. Later on, coming together with enough funds to buy a movie theater out in uh, Virginia Highlands. And if you're there today, I think it's a clothing store. But if you walk in that strip mall or that little area there on Virginia Highlands of stores and boutiques, that's where MCC found a home in a theater where we could live out the drama of our lives in many ways and shapes and forms. We were there until uh, the, for several years until 1993 where we purchased another movie theater. What's that all about? I guess we were into the drama and the theater of life and we began to con continue our ministry and expand it in so many ways. Then two years ago, or greater than that, because we moved in two years, we sold our facility for seven times what we paid for it. Children's Health bought the facility, and today it's their construction center for their contractors. The sanctuary is a big warehouse for all kinds of construction tools, and uh, the offices are places for their contractors as they build a huge complex for children's health. And we look as we see the road that we've traveled, 46 years of amazing ministry, of touching people's lives and touching the Atlanta community with a message of great compassion symbolized by the work that we do of caring for the hungry and the homeless, of a do unto others offering every Sunday, starting our worship service by thinking about others in the world around us, carrying a message of compassion where we bought a bus that's 
going to be taking uh, food to the communities all around us and helping out to reach the world around us beyond the four walls here. Hosting a dinner for the hungry and the homeless every Wednesday night for 12 years and going on and expanding with compassion providing clothing for those in need. A young man came by yesterday and said, look at my shoes. Could I have a pair of shoes? Do you have something for me? The soles were worn out and I could see his bare feet, toes picking out, sticking out between the shoes, the toes of the shoes, his pants torn and his shirt dirty and said, it would just feel so good just to have a new pair of shoes or a fresh shirt and a pair of pants. You were there as a congregation. Yesterday is just one day of the many days that you've touched the lives through compassion. You've been there with a message of inclusion for 46 years, welcoming in the Atlanta community the incredible doors wide open for diversity. We say we're so diverse and so inclusive, we said that when the Martians land, they're coming here first because they know they're always going to be welcomed here because that's been our message from the very beginning. Everyone is welcome to the fullest extent. And the spirit of inclusion says no one is a second-class person in their walk with God. No one should be treated less than. And there's not a target market where we say, oh, our church is reaching out to this group only or that group only. It's a message that's universal and it's there for everyone. Today, we see this great spirit of inclusion and diversity welcomed within how we live and do our ministry. We're celebrating today five years of our affiliation with the Unity Church. We're so grateful that we experienced the difficulty of finding a home years ago when we started And when the Decatur Unity had no place to go, we said, you're welcome, come with us. And that great spirit of unity says, we believe in the same message you do of the oneness, that we're all one together, that the Christ in me sees the Christ in you, and the Christ in you sees the Christ in me. There is no separation. There is no division in our world. We celebrated this, and we have to say for each one of these things, I am grateful. Say it with me. I am grateful. Because on goes the list as we welcomed an affiliation with the affiliated New Thought Network of congregations. We're part of 150 congregations around the world that have come together in this network to share resources, to share fellowship, to share encouragement and support. We're so thrilled because through these wonderful networks, we've been so uh, enriched with the opportunity to open up the Emerson Theological Institute offering the opportunity for people to have a bachelor's, a master's, a doctorate of religious studies or doctorate of divinity. And this last week, we had a beautiful graduation celebrating with our graduates, those receiving their doctorate, those who had receiving their master's and those receiving their bachelor. And this is just the beginning. And we have to say, I am grateful. Say it with me. I am grateful. And then we look at this beautiful facility. Today, we're celebrating our second anniversary. Joanne and Connie remember the very first experience here. It was their wedding. The building wasn't even really totally finished. We were scrambling to get the paint on the walls and the carpet laid and everything. And they had scheduled their wedding for October the 1st. The very first event was a wonderful celebration of love. And I think that's indicative of what this building has been all about celebrations of love, including uniting people, bringing people together in that context. And we rushed together. We hosted their beautiful ceremony right here in this sanctuary as they committed and shared. So happy anniversary to you. Let's say happy anniversary to them. Yes. We have this beautiful facility. We hosted conferences. We're open seven days a week with activities. There's another church on the second floor that had no place to go and we welcomed them and they're meeting up there right now. There's another church that has services in this space on Tuesdays. They had no place to go and we said, come on in. In this great spirit, we said, we welcome everyone and we wanna collaborate and work together and empower one another. There are 30 different practitioners, healers, counselors, and therapists on the second and third floor. It's amazing the amount of collaboration that goes together. As we have set this forth, this message that says, we're not here to do the work of God alone. We're here to collaborate and partner and work together. When we understand this, 
We've really lived out this message of sharing what God has blessed us with, we bless others with. And we open our doors, we open our facility. And I think that's why when the Spirit knew that we were this kind of, uh, had this kind of vision, Spirit just says, you need a grand and big facility. Remember, we sold our building. We bought a building on Cliff Valley Way. It wasn't big enough. It was one of those beautiful facilities. We had gorgeous plans and we owned it for about four months and the real estate agent came by and said, would you mind selling it for a half a million dollars more than you paid? And we said, yes, best, best bake sale we've ever had. <laughs> that was really great. And we had the opportunity knowing that we could expand and go even bigger. And now instead of going from 10,000 square feet to 20,000 square feet to 36,000 square feet, hang on, are you ready for where we're going next? Because who knows what the Spirit has for us. In that spirit, that consciousness of generosity and saying, we want to open up our doors and empower people to do spiritual work. We're not going to do it all alone. And we're not here to say, excuse me, it's all about us. And we're going to do all the work in the world. But instead saying, no, we're going to work with you and you and you. We're going to work with one another. And in that great spirit, we've created this spiritual center, the largest of its type in the state of Georgia. This kind of spiritual center that offers opportunity for people to grow spiritually through so many different pathways. Workshops, classes, seminaries, compassion, teaching, worship, all kinds of things all happening within the beautiful facility that we've been gifted. And we have to say, I am grateful. Say it with me. I am grateful. We have so much to be grateful for. And that's what we're doing today. But the key is not to be just grateful for one day, not just grateful on one occasion, but to have an attitude that says this is a daily thing. That we have to have a, 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 an awareness that gratitude is not just special occasions. Gratitude in Thanksgiving is not just a season in November. Gratitude is not just something we do when someone gives us a gift or we are awarded something and we say thank you. Gratitude is an attitude that we have every single day. Oddly enough, in our culture today, we have kind of an attitude that we like to save things for special occasions, don't we? Things that say, oh, you know, it's special. We'll save this for a special opportunity instead of saying, we'll use it all the time. You know, how many of you got that china that says, oh, that's for special occasions? How many of you got those towels? Oh, those are for special occasions. But growing up, you know, my mother always had all those wonderful things that were gifted to her through family and friends, through her wedding, all these kind of things that she had in a cedar chest. She had special things. And I would say, oh, mom, are we going to use this china? No, nope, that's for special. That's for special. Mom, are we going to use this, these napkins? We got beautiful cloth napkins embroidered. No, nope, that's for special. No, we don't use those. We're waiting for something special. Then she had a blanket that was given to her on her wedding day. And after 70 years, she'd never used it. It was in her cedar chest. And I said, mom, what are you waiting for? Today is special. Let's take it out. Let's use it. Well, I can remember as a kid, all these things that she said we're going to save for a special occasion. My aunt Connie came in and she came in from Sheboygan, Wisconsin. We were so excited to see her. She traveled a long distance. She was coming. Oh, wow. Today we're going to have special. It's going to be the special china, the special napkins, the special stuff, the special towels, the special everything. is I mean, oh, no, honey, she's not special enough. <laughs> You see, in our world today, sometimes we think, I'll save gratitude for something special. Special celebrations, special occasions. The Spirit of God calls us to a journey of gratitude on a day-to-day -day basis. And that gratitude is really one of the keys to this great, great asset. This asset that says, I can be in control of my whole outlook of life. I can choose. And through the power of gratitude, I'm enriched with an energy that enables me to choose wisely every single day the positive pathway of joy and peace in the journey of my life. Tomorrow, may, something may come up. Tomorrow may change. Today, I'm grateful, but I know that as I choose through the power of gratitude every single moment of my life, I have an even keel, shall we say. I'm moving through that nothing seems to rock my boat. Yet you know how it is. Certain things in life can come our way. And there went gratitude out the window. How many of you ever been on a cruise? Raise your hand. 
Okay? Uh, not everybody. Uh, how many of you have seen a cruise? Uh, raise your hand. Okay? How many know the word cruise? Okay. Okay, we got 100% here. All right, now we're all together. All right, just want to make sure. Because if you've been on a cruise, you kind of know what it would be like where sometimes the boat gets rocked. Years ago, I had the opportunity to go on a cruise on one of the smaller boats that were out there, ships. And, you know, it was one of those things we're going through a tropical storm and, you know, that ship is being tossed to and fro and I'm being tossed out of bed at night and rolling on the floor and, you know, all those kind of things. You know, it was just one of those experiences where you went out in the hallway and there's barf bags every single feet, you know, and they're full and you're looking for an empty barf bag for yourself, you know. Your, ro- your whole boat is being rocked. Your life is seasick. Your whole experience is in turmoil. Sometimes we allow things to come into our lives, but I'm so grateful that today's ships now offer these stabilizers. You know what stabilizers are? They kind of come out of the bottom of the ship and they kind of like little fins there that when the sea begins to get tossing the ship to and, to and fro, it stabilizes and bringing balance to the ship. That one of our last cruises, we went through a hurricane and no one knew that we were even in a hurricane. We, it was so stabilized It was so balanced that there wasn't that experience. There wasn't that seasick experience going on in people's lives. This is the same thing for our life because I'm going to tell you this. Gratitude is the balancing stabilizer for your life. When the world of thought, symbolized by the waters of the world around us, the chaotic thought that may be like seas that are tossing us to and fro come against us. When you think things are always going great and suddenly the storm of life comes, where you've been so appreciative of that new blender that you just got and then it doesn't work and now you're angry and upset and you're not grateful anymore for this gift. When you may have gotten something that's been given to you and you're so appreciative but something happened to change, where you may have been one day I'm so thankful for everything I'm going through and the next day it's gone. You see, this stabilizing spirit is there as we embody gratitude every single day of our lives, that we embrace it. It keeps us from getting seasick and vomiting up in the journey of our day-to-day spiritual life. Those things that we go, I can't stand this. I can't go through this. How many of you have been going through some ups and downs this week just watching the news, watching media, watching Facebook? On goes on the list. How about in conversations? Maybe you've gone through some other experiences in your life where you're thinking, oh, what is going on in the world around me? And you feel sick. Gratitude for every day. Gratitude is based in this one truth. I know that all things are happening for a reason. And that reason is unfolding for me right now. Right now. Like, whoa, wait a minute. What do you mean? But that's the spirit of gratitude. I am grateful for all things because in all things, God is at work. God is always at work in that and providing my highest and best. So with that, I have this wonderful understanding that no matter what I'm going through, it's the unfolding of the highest and best. I need not be afraid. I need not be frightened. So our text today says, rejoice always. Be in constant communion with God. Give thanks in all circumstances. For this is God's desire for you expressed through Jesus the Christ. Here's the key. It's being grateful not for all things. Because some of these things we say, ooh, are you telling me I need to be grateful for the cold I have? Are you telling me I need to be grateful for this loss I'm enduring? Are you telling me I need to be grateful for something traumatic that's happening in our world? It says in all things. We get confused and think it says for all things. But in all things, we express the spirit, the energy, the feeling, the emotion of thankfulness in the midst of everything that we're going through. So it says pray without ceasing, being in communion, constant communion with God which is to be in the affirmative side of life. That means, you know, that God is all good, right? So if you're going to be in communion with God, you're with the all good. You're in the affirmative. You're in the positive. You're in that outlook that no matter what's going on, no matter what may be rocking your boat, no matter what it may be, the stabilizers are out. And that says, in the midst of whatever I'm going through, I know 
I can be grateful. Because whatever I'm going through, there's a reason. And that reason is unfolding my highest and best. It's amazing when we look with 2020 hindsight, looking back at so many experiences we've gone through, that we struggled with and we wondered we were never grateful for it when we were going through, but now we look back and go, wow, you know, I think I'm kind of grateful for that. I think I'm kind of grateful. How many of you remember years ago at Tully Road in our former facility when the air conditioning and heating unit went out in the sanctuary? Well, if you remember that, you remember cold winters where we gathered together in the sanctuary with big, gigantic fans trying to blow some hot air into the sanctuary as if the pastor couldn't provide enough. But we're trying to get some in there, get some hot air in there, get some going in there, you know, to kind of warm it up because it was chilly in there. Summer times, it was hot. Not hot as hell, but hot. Yes, and it was there. And you would say, oh, this sanctuary, it's just too uncomfortable here. And we struggled with it. And we wondered, why is this happening? And the bill to replace it was going to be $200,000. And we said, how do we do this? Well, we'll just endure. But we put that out in consciousness. God was making a way when there seems to be no way. And now we look back and say that was the impetus because when the real estate agent said, would you be interested in selling your facility to children's health? We said, yes, talk to us. And we began to listen. Oh, seven times what we paid for and we get out of the air conditioning and heating problem? Yes, we're grateful. And we jumped on the opportunity to sell and move on to something bigger and to expand to something even better. You see, we look back now and we think, oh, you know, that air conditioning issue. Oh, you know, the problems. And we think, well, if we, had, we could have resolved them, we could have stayed where we were but if you have driven by that location now, it's being swallowed up by the hospital complex. We would have been lost in the midst of that. And we look now with 2020 vision back and we say, oh, thank you. Thank you, air conditioner, for blowing up. Thank you, heating system, for falling out and, and collapsing. Thank you for all of that. Because in the midst of everything, God is unfolding your highest and best if you'll just be grateful in the moment. For the spirit of gratitude says, I already know. I'm grateful for this. I'm grateful for whatever is going on right now because I know it's taking me to a higher place. I know it's unfolding my highest and best. So I can experience and celebrate this spirit of, I am grateful for whatever is happening right now in the journey of our life because it's taking us to a place of even higher and better pl of living in our lives. So with this, we become grateful in the midst of all things. And we can truly rejoice always with a spirit of gratitude and appreciation. We're giving thanks in all kinds of things. The Apostle Paul said, I have learned this one thing, that whatever circumstance I am in, therein to be grateful. Whatever circumstances I am in, whatever I'm going through, I am grateful because God is taking us out to the highest and best. Jesus spoke of a parable of a woman who confronted an unjust judge. It was a judge who didn't care about people, didn't care about circumstances, didn't care what people thought. But she was persistent and she would constantly approach him and say, please speak out injustice on, on behalf of my situation. Speak, please bring about justice unfolded. Constantly persistent day after day after day after day after day. Jesus spoke this wonderful parable of the spirit of persistence in prayer. I'd like to suggest that that parable also applies for us in the spirit of persistence in gratitude being grateful on a day-to-day -day basis, grateful for everything, even though this judge was refusing. That spirit of persistence wore him down and finally he said, all right, I give in. If I can get you off my back, I give in and I will do the right thing. So it is in the spirit of gratitude that says, no matter what's unfolding, no matter what's happening right here and now, I am grateful and I am persistent in my gratitude. No matter what the appearances may look like, no matter what circumstances I'm, look, I'm, I'm engaged in, I believe that everything is working out for my highest and best. Now, we have beautiful Bible stories that echo our story of our journey of our life over and over again. How many of you know that Nancy Reagan, remember her? 
she launched a wonderful campaign. And what was it? Just say no. Just say no to drugs, right? Well, today I want to launch a new campaign that says just say thank you. Just say thank you. In every circumstance, whatever you're going through, just say thank you. And the Bible unfolds for us wonderful stories where we can find ourselves there too. How about the story of David? A simple young shepherd boy confronted by a seasoned warrior armed and equipped with all the weapons of that day and age, Goliath. You can imagine David's feeling and saying, wait a minute, I'm going out to war. Let's think this thing through here. I'm about this tall. He's about that tall. He's equipped. I'm not equipped. All I have is a slingshot. This doesn't really look like in the appearances something that's really going to work in my favor. This doesn't really look like it's really going to be something fantastic for me. And the outcome is doesn't really look good at all. But I'm going to say thank you. Because thank you says I am grateful. And I'm grateful knowing that all things are going to work together for good. So I'm just going to pick up that stone and slingshot and here I go. And what has happened? He destroys the Goliath, the giant. So too in our lives when we just say, I'm embracing this campaign, just say thank you. That's going to be my motto. When I face my Goliath, when I face my giant, I may look at the appearances and say, wait a minute, I'm just me. I'm just, am I that equipped? Can I really do this? But in the power of gratitude, in the power of saying, just say thank you, I know God is with me, working through me, in me, around me, and great things are going to unfold through this. I will destroy that giant, whatever it may be in my pathway. Daniel in the lion's den. You can imagine his experience being lowered down into the pit with hungry lions all around him. This doesn't look like it's going to work in his favor, does it? The appearances there are hungry lions licking their chops, looking at him, fresh meat, look what arrived. You can imagine the lions' thoughts and conversations going amongst them. Hmm, who will have the leg first and who will eat the arm? And I'll save the heart for you. And uh, on goes the list, you might think, of the hungry lions' consciousness of Daniel being lowered in. This is, by all appearances, not going to work in Daniel's favor. But in the spirit of saying, ah, thank you, gratitude that says, I know that all things are working together for my highest and best. What happens? Daniel spends the night with some kitty cats and they all fall asleep. And the next day he's brought out of the lion's den to shout with great victory that God is alive and at work within him and throughout all humanity. What a powerful lesson for our lives when you feel you're being lowered into your lion's den and you think everything's going to devour you. Remember, we don't look at appearances, but we exude a spirit of gratitude that says, God is already at work. All things are working together for my good. And I know this to be true, that there is a reason for all things. Ecclesiastics talks about it. In everything, there is a season. There is a season for all things to happen and that moves through that season and we move through the reasons that we're going through the journey of our life. But we also know in great gratitude that whatever we go through is taking us to a greater understanding of this divine truth within our lives. We find that the children of Israel, as they were fleeing Egypt, thinking that they had escaped, everything is good and clear. You can imagine the feeling when all of a sudden they're hearing the chariots of Pharaoh behind them and they're facing the Red Sea ahead and thinking, wait a minute, who here knows how to swim? Anybody here? You know, they're like looking amongst the group. Any swimmers here? No, 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 we didn't get swimming 101 in Egypt. We didn't learn that. Uh, no, we're not swimmers. We can't swim across this Red Sea. Anybody a boat builder? Quick, how fast can we get a pontoon going? Can we get something going here? You know, you can imagine the feeling and the emotion. The appearances say, get ready. You're going to be captured. You're going to be taken back into bondage and in slavery. But in that spirit... There's a spirit of gratitude that says, thank you. I know that God is already at work unfolding the highest and best. And the waters part and they walk across dry land and the adversary is removed. So it is in your life when you may think that circumstances are coming up against you. 
and you feel like, what are my choices? Look at the appearances. Everything around me says, my checkbook says I don't have. The, I'm in lack and I'm in poverty. Everything around me would speak to say I'm in loss. Everything says that my life is a failure. It's falling apart. Everything about it is just not going to work out for my highest and best. Oh, but in the spirit of gratitude, it says I know and I'm grateful in advance. We need not fall back into slavery and bondage to those old ways of thinking, but we find our own liberation. So I want to share with you today that today as we're full of gratitude and celebration, it's not just this day, but be grateful every day. Take it with us that we live the campaign of I am grateful. The campaign that says, just say thank you in every moment of our life. Not just on key occasions like this. Not just on wonderful moments of holidays or gift giving. Or moments that we think of the seasons of this fall. When people are called forth to say, oh, today's the day of gratitude. Every day is the day of walking and living. And experiencing the power of gratitude that says, I know. I am grateful even before. I am grateful even in the midst. I am grateful no matter what the circumstances may be. I am grateful no matter what the appearance of the world or the uh, circumstance around me. I am simply grateful for all is good and God is at work. This is our great asset. Being consciously in control of our life through the power of gratitude. The great asset at work that's working in you and through you through this power of gratitude for in everything and in every day we celebrate we celebrate not just with drums not just special occasions not just anniversaries we just celebrate the goodness of God Amen